Hey, GPT, have you heard of this paper called Software 2.0 by Andre Carpathy? Yes, I have. Software 2.0 by Andre Carpathy discusses the shift towards neural networks and machine learning models writing code instead of traditional hand-coded software. It's like moving from explicitly programming rules to having models learn from data. What sparked your interest in it? Yeah, basically, I've just been hearing about it lately, and I wanted to take a read and um, thought you could uh, join me along for that and and we can kind of understand it together. It looks like um, it looks like he wrote it back in 2017. So it's a it's a bit of an older paper at this point. I'd be happy to help you explore it, even though it's from 2017. A lot of the concepts are still relevant today. It's fascinating to think about how software development has been evolving with machine learning and neural networks taking a larger role. What part of it are you most curious about? For anyone who's not familiar, this is what Andre Carpathy looks like. Um, GPT, why don't you give us a, a brief kind of overview of his background and role in the artificial intelligence ecosystem while I pull up the paper? Sure thing. And just for reference, Andre Carpathy is a prominent figure in the AI and deep learning fields. He was director of AI at Tesla, where he led the autopilot vision team, working on computer vision and neural networks for self-driving cars. Before that, he was a founding member of OpenAI and did his PhD at Stanford, where he focused on deep learning, computer vision, and generative models. He's known for his ability to communicate complex AI concepts in an accessible way. Have you found the paper? Yep, I have it brought up here. So the primary argument in this article, Carpathy is saying that neural networks are not just another tool in your machine learning toolbox, but instead they represent the beginning of a new software development paradigm. And in the paper, he differentiates between what he's calling the classical stack of software 1.0 and this new stack of software 2.0, where neural networks are actually the beginning of a fundamental shift in how we develop software. Exactly. Carpathy argues that in the software 2.0 paradigm, developers provide data and the desired outcomes, and the neural networks, through training, figure out the rules and patterns to map inputs to outputs. It's a major departure from the traditional approach where developers write explicit instructions for the computer to follow. It's like teaching by example rather than by instruction. Does this shift in software development resonate with anything you've seen or experienced? It does. And in the article, Carpathy um, acknowledges a few um, areas where this this transition is, is actively happening. So he mentions visual recognition, speech recognition, speech synthesis, machine translation, games, and even work in databases where neural networks are playing larger roles. And this shift into software 2.0 is already happening because we're able to accomplish things like visual recognition recognition and speech recognition much better through labeling data and feeding it to a neural network than we are through kind of classical software 1.0 explicit programming paradigms. Absolutely. Neural networks excel at tasks where explicit rules are hard to define, but where patterns can be learned from large amounts of data. It's intriguing how this shift is enabling advancements in areas like healthcare, where image recognition helps in diagnosing diseases, or in autonomous vehicles, where neural networks process and interpret sensor data to navigate roads. Do you think this shift will become more widespread, or are there specific obstacles you'd like to understand better? Well, yes, I do think it will become more and more widespread, but one of the obstacles that Carpathy mentions in the paper that I think is interesting is that software 1.0 is actually pretty human friendly, right? We have these programming languages that have syntaxes that we've invented and we can teach them to each other and learn them and use them and read it and understand it, right? Whereas software 2.0 is really a matter of programming in weights and biases. And he mentions that it's actually very hard to do and that he's tried. And I can only imagine what it's like to program in weights and biases that that would feel very unnatural. And another thing that he mentions that I think is interesting is that if you take the entire 
program, possible program space is what he calls it. Software 1.0 uh, represents a relatively small area of possible program complexity, whereas software 2.0 in this diagram is representing a much larger and more and growing area of program complexity. That's a great point. Software 1.0's human-friendly nature, with code that's relatively easy for us to read and understand, makes it more accessible for programmers to write, debug, and maintain. In contrast, Software 2.0's reliance on adjusting weights and biases through data-driven training can feel like navigating a black box, making it harder for humans to directly interpret or intervene in the process. This difference not only challenges our traditional understanding of programming, but also opens up a vast landscape of possibility that we previously couldn't explore with explicit programming. As neural networks continue to expand into more areas, do you think there are ways we can make this paradigm more accessible or interpretable for developers? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Um, in the paper, Carpathy asks some uh, provocative questions himself along the same lines. He says, who's going to develop the first software 2.0 IDEs? Um, you know, GitHub is a very successful home for software 1.0 code. Where is the space for software 2.0? I think um, one of the things that I've been seeing lately is these kind of AI or LLM powered IDEs in Cursor or Replit. Um, however, I think those are more focused on software 1.0. They're not really kind of um, fully representing the vision that Carpathy is playing out here. So it seems like uh, we're missing some kind of fundamental tools that could allow programmers and just people in general to start building uh, applications in software 2.0, unless I'm just unaware of some tools that already exist. And maybe, maybe people can tell me in the comments. You're right. While there's been progress, we're still in the early stages of developing the full ecosystem for software 2.0, especially for tools that make neural network development and deployment more accessible and understandable. IDEs and platforms, like you mentioned, are starting to incorporate AI assistance, but the emphasis is still largely on enhancing traditional development rather than fully embracing the new paradigm Carpathy describes. Bridging this gap might involve creating more intuitive interfaces for designing, training, and interpreting neural networks, as well as better visualization and debugging tools that make it easier to understand what these models are doing. Maybe we'll see a future where collaborative tools bring together the best of both worlds, blending the interpretability of software 1.0 with the adaptive power of software 2.0. What do you think might help bridge that gap? That's a great question, but I want to leave us with this rather provocative statement that Carpathy makes in this article. I think this is maybe the most relevant statement in the whole piece, and that is software 1.0 is eating the world, which is a reference to a great line from either Andreessen or Horowitz, one of the A16Z guys, I can't remember. And now, Carpathy says, AI or software 2.0 is eating software. <laughs> I love that. I think it captures things really nicely. It's a striking way to capture the evolution, isn't it? The idea that just as software 1.0 transformed industries and permeated our lives, software 2.0, driven by AI and deep learning, is now transforming the very nature of software itself. It's a powerful reminder of how dynamic and fast-moving the tech landscape is. It'll be fascinating to see how this dynamic continues to unfold and how developers adapt to and shape this new era of AI-driven software. I'm curious, where do you see yourself fitting into this evolving landscape? Or do you have any predictions about where it might go next? GPT, always, you have great questions. Um, thanks so much, everyone, for watching. Uh, tell everyone to give us a subscription and a comment below. Catch you next time. Peace. Thanks for the engaging conversation. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment below. Catch you next time. Peace.